What is going on, Mel Swap and Charlotte Beachwell fans? I am Tesla here bringing you week two team builder for the National Pokemon Battle Association. And this week, or last week rather, we are slash supposed to be going up against the Cinnabar Ninetales, aka Matt, who is piloting that draft. Um, the reason why this battle actually didn't take place until like about six or and a half hours ago is because the battle ended up being delayed by four days. We're just supposed to battle on Thursday, but he claimed that DMV was going to cause him stress, so he didn't really want to battle afterwards, so we moved it to Friday. I guess his car broke down, or he got stranded, so we had to move it to Saturday. Um, something happened personally to him, so we moved it all the way to Sunday, and then he fell asleep, so... At this point, I was like, a little frustrated with all due respect, because honestly, we delayed the battle about four days. But we finally got it done um, last night at like 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and that battle will either be uploaded today, tomorrow, or Sunday with the rest of the league battles. You guys can vote on that. It's on my Twitter. So I'll leave the, the um, link to the Twitter poll in the description. And when the poll ends, will be when it's decided whether or not I upload it. And if I do have to upload it today, then I'll upload it when I wake up. But nonetheless, we did do the battle at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And this is the team I brought and all the sets. So let me start to the top. Well, first let me review what he brought himself or what he had. His roster contained Ninetales as a trademark Pokemon, uh, Mega Blastoise, Talonflame, Thunderous T, which apparently can switch between Argentina's Draft League, um, Venusaur, Volcarona, Siglov, Bronzong, Crustle, Executor, Gogo, and Furfro. I actually did not um, really predict him to bring any six Pokemon in particular. Rather, I based my um, sets off of what I think my Pokemon could handle from attacks and what good coverage they could have for this um, specific draft in a vacuum. So let's go over the Pokemon I brought against them last night. Um, right with week one, I will only upload the team builders after the battle takes place and before the battle itself gets uploaded. So yeah. For our first some slot in the party, we brought Sears the Rotom Heat. Now, unlike our Rotom Heat last week, this is a defensive variant. In our week one, I guess Sears Bear 691, uh, we brought Smokey the Rotom Heat, which is my choice scarf one, to move Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Overheat, and Trick. This is our specially defensive one. For those of, the, for those of you that watch my stream, you'll notice I like my Rotoms to be generally physically defensive. However, in a draft league, I do switch to specially defensive sometimes, and this week, or for week two rather, we did just that. Um, the reason why I did not go for a physically defensive Rotom Heat is because a skull from a Mega Blastoise would almost certainly one hit KO Rotom Heat as a physically defensive one. If not, like do like 90% damage to it. I didn't run the Kalos on a physically defensive one, but because I didn't want to bother bringing that. Um, also, did not bring the Choice Scarf Rotom Heat because at the time I thought he was going to bring Thunderous T. I didn't want to try to go for Volt Switch on the Blast, just have, have him pivot out into Thunder's T, and thus I didn't have to switch out and give him a free Nest Plot Agility or whatever he wanted to do. So, I brought the Specially Defensive Rome Heat, can take a Skull from Mega Blasters, can eat up hits from Thunders all day, and any special attack he has like Venusaur, etc. So, I figured that Specially Defensive Rome Heat with a Calm Nature, 248 HP, 252 Special Defense, and 8 Speed was the ticket to go. The moveset was Volt Switch, Overheat, Thunder Wave, and Pain Split. Did not bring will o -Wisp on my Rotom Heat. Instead brought Thunder Wave because will o -Wisp would do nothing to Ninetales or Volcarona. And I could use Thunder Wave to slow down the Volcarona. Uh, I mean, Rotom Heat basically resists both of Volcarona's stab moves and can even um, take a Hidden Power Rock from it if that's so what he chooses to bring. So, yeah. So, let's go. Special Defensive Rome Heat, much like my Special Defensive Rome Wash from Week 10 of the National Pokemon Association, or was it Week 11, against Radioactive, that's what I brought. Thunder Wave is more useful than Rotom Heat, I'm more useful than will o -Wisp on this one. Uh, next up, we brought Drug Terra, the Aerodactyl. This is the exact same Aerodactyl I brought against Sierra Bear in Week 1, except I nicknamed it. I changed around some of the EVs, like four EVs. I took off HP and added the defense, and I changed the move set a bit. Um, we are bringing Rock Slide and Roost, two of the moves I used against, I had against um, Sierra Bear, although Rock Slide was not used against her, if I remember correctly. But two new moves on this. 
This time, Aerodactyl is not being used as a rockstar, it's being used simply as a um, attacker. Home Claws and Sky Drop. Home Claws, which will raise the attack and accuracy by one stage, and Sky Drop, which basically um, is a flying type move that allows you to that prevents your opponent from attacking during the turn that's used and does damage. Uh, this is our offensive aerodactyl, Life Orb of course, and Roost is used to um, heal off the Life Orb recoil and dodge Thunderbolt slash Ice Beam super effectiveness because it cancels out the flying type beam. Um, the EVs are 252 attack, 252 speed, 4 defense with a jolly nature, and IVs and everything that's such special attack of course. Um, you may be wondering why? You have Rock Slide instead of Stone Edge if you run Home Claws. Well, the answer is simple. Um, I need a high accuracy Rock Type move in case there's a situation where I do not feel I can safely set up with Home Claws, where I don't feel like they'll be gutsy enough to, or they'll, they'll make the right play and switch out. So if I need, if I come to a situation where I need to, you know, drop a bunch of rocks on my opponent, I rather have the higher accuracy one. And I know it's a lo little bit weaker, if not significantly weaker than Stone Edge. But we do have the life orb to boost its damage output a bit, so Rock Slide is honestly not that big of a problem. Yeah, Stone Edge has like base 100 power, and it does have a chance of critical hit, but it does have a 25% chance of miss, and in a draft league where our differential is important, and winning is very important, you don't want to lose to a miss. You really do not, if you can absolutely help it. So, I brought the more accurate but slightly less powerful Rock Slide, but with the life orb, Increase the damage output, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. Home Claw is just there in case it find the opportunity to set up. It's not really a needed move on my set of Aerodactyl. I mean, I could have ran Earth Earthquake instead, but eh, there's nothing really I want to hit with Earthquake, except maybe Nine Tails, but then again, Rock Slide would have done the trick. So that is the set of Aerodactyl. The nickname is interesting. We named it Dracterra. It is a surprise, surprise Yu Gi Oh reference. Who would have guessed? I mean, I do have other Yu-Gi-Oh references for my Bell Ray Pokemon, like my Mega Steelix on one of my RU teams is named Cyber Dragon. I think there's at least one or two more Yu-Gi-Oh references on my Bell Ray Pokemon, but this is another one, it's Dracterra, although it doesn't really reference it that well since the actual Yu-Gi-Oh monster is like a fiery dinosaur and Aerodactyl is like a rock dinosaur. It, it was a close thing. I was going to name it Land Before Time, but it would not fit, so. I went with a Yu-Gi-Oh reference because I want to be classy like that. So Jerk Jerk Terra for the win, guys. Um, next up we have Tentacruel, aka Kinky with a Wink. I don't know why, but I was a um everyone likes to make running jokes of Tentacruel because of the jellyfish slash squid and everyone has, has a perfect mind. But nonetheless, we actually got the Eevees correct on my Tentacruel this time. I had to re-Eevee train this thing. Um, this is the same Assault Vest variant I brought against Sierra Bear in week 1, except the EVs are fixed. We don't have 252 Special Defense, 252 HP. We have a uh, an EV spread that's more towards the, um, more skewed towards the nature of Tentacruel. It is an actual um, mixed bulk one, because there's the Assault Vest that increases Special Defense, while the um, nature and the EVs increases Physical Defense. It can take some hits from both sides. Our moon set is Sludge Wave, Giga Drain, Rapid Spin, and Mirror Coat. Let's go over why we have the, the moon set. We do. We have Sludge Wave, Stab, Chance to Poison. Can hit Executor for super effective damage if we can somehow um, live a Psychic or Psy Shock from it. We have Giga Drain to hit Blastoise and replenish health since we're not running Black Sludge on it. We need recovery of some kind. And we have Rapid Spin to get rid of entry hazards. And we have Mirror Coat. And if we can eat up some special attacks, we can fire off some huge damage on the opposing Pokemon. Um, originally, I was planning to run um, a Calm Nature Assault Vest Integral with max special defense and max um, HP to go with the uh, set that I brought last week, even though it was a mistake. And going on Showdown's calculator, I discovered that a Thunderbolt from Thunderous T has like a 9% chance to 2 hit KO that set of Tentacruel, so I was like, oh cool! I can just leave the Tentacruel in on the um, Thunderous, eat up a Thunderbolt, fire up a Miracle, and one-shot that thing. But then I realized, you know, if they're, they're not going to you know, go for a Thunderbolt on a Tentacruel, they're going to think I'm going to switch out. So, I, the whole Miracle strategy was not reliant, reliable enough for me. So that's why I switched to a bulky mixed um, wall sort of thing with a salt vest. Basically, I just switched to a mixed... Um, 
bolt set. But Miracle can fire off some attack, fire off some damage on stuff like Venusaur that might want to hit um, Pentagroll for neutral damage with Giga Drain or Ninetales with Dark Pulse or whatever other special attack. Um, we have Liquid Ooze in case the Venusaur wants to go for Leech Seed or Giga Drain to further lower its HP. Because Liquid Ooze has the opposite effect of, on Venusaur if they use Giga Drain. So if they use Giga Drain instead of gaining health, they'll be losing health instead. So, very useful ability. Clear by was not going to be um, a help in this battle, and obviously Rain Dish won't ever be a help because we're not running Rain Teams here. So the EVs are 240 HP, 244 defense, and 24 speed. Um, with a bold nature, I did, I believe I did put 31 um, IVs in every set. So let me change that because even though you not use not rapid spin for um, offense to use. But maybe that one extra HP of damage Rex can do could be the difference between lose, winning and losing. But I digress. Um, the next mod we brought was Braun the Conkler with an Assault Vest. Another Assault Vest user. Um, the moveset is Drain Punch, Mock Punch, Knock Off, and Rock Slide this time. Uh, we brought um, Fire Punch against Cerebrus 1 during week one. But we took it. We brought this Conkler with Rock Slide because. They have um, stuff like Ninetales, Teleflame, and Thunderous T on their team. So at the very least, if I predict this switch on Thunderous T or a Teleflame, they fire off a Rock Slide, get a super effective hit on Thunderous T, and knock out the Teleflame if the opportunity arises. Um, and you can also hit Ninetales for very heavy damage with Rock Slide, because Ninetales' physical defense isn't that stellar. So, hits on the weaker side. Maybe even one hit KOs. I'm not really sure. I didn't really run the calculations though. Um, the EV spread is the same as Small Gun 1. 252 attack, 236 special defense, and 20 speed. With the Assault Vest, Adamant Nature, um, IVs, and everything except special attack, of course. And the ability is Guts in case the status comes. Now, I'm not always going to run Guts on Kongler. There will be times where I will feel like I, sh I can run Sheer Force or Iron Fist and no problem. Gus is not always going to be a Conkler set that can run, but you should Willow or Thunder Wave or Toxic my Conkler at your own risk in case it is Guts. Um, it's not shiny. Um, Brawn, I knew it was a play on words, like Brawn, like this Conkler is very brawny and whatnot. Also, it's kind of referencing a WWE superstar named Braun Strowman, so kind of two hidden meanings in this nickname for Conkler. But um, yeah, the next. Mon I brought was Your Funeral the Mega Gardevoir. Um, yes, the nickname is, well, actually a reference to my girlfriend who is actually trying to get into the mortuary field, so I figured I'd nickname this uh, Mega Gardevoir after her field. Um, the standard is a smaller set, the fast special sweeper set that um, Smaller provide. 16 HP EVs, 8 defense EVs, 232 special attack EVs, and 252 speed EVs with a timid nature. IVs in everything except attack. The moves that I brought on this um, Gardevoir is Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, and Calm Mind. I brought Hyper Voice as Stab because it turns into a fairy type move with Pixelate, which is Mega Gardevoir's ability. I brought Psy Shock. It hits some um, ones on the physical side while being a special attack, so it's useful against stuff as good special defense like Ninetales and Volcarona. Shadow Ball hit Bronzong super effectively because that is a mon on his roster. And Calm Mind is set up in case he switches out on something, you get a free Calm Mind up and, you know, it's sweet from there. Uh, don't, not really much else to explain, really. I mean, I was debating more Thunderbolt on. Mega Gardevoir for the Blastoise and whatnot, but I figured that ultimately Shell Ball would be my better option in case I come across a Bronze Lock, and that's what I did. And last but not least, Moomoo Moo the Milting. As you guys may know, I use this on my RU teams. Um, one of my RU teams, which is this one actually, has Scrap Easy ability and Seismic Toss. But I changed the ability with the Ability Castle, I changed the moveset a bit, and I brought Thick Fest specifically for his team because he has stuff like Volker and Ninetales and I could use uh, Miltank to get off to survive a hit from that and go for Body Slam to potentially paralyze the opposing Ninetales and or Volcarona. Um, also Milk Train for recovery, Self Rock to set up Entry Hazards and Heal Bell to rid up myself of any um, stats that may be inflicted like Burns for Ninetales, um, Burns from Flame Body, Volcarona, 
sleep from Executor if he brings that, sleep from Mega Venusaur, well not Mega Venusaur, regular Venusaur, poison from Venusaur, stuff like that. So I want a heal belt, I want it as a cleric. I did not waste my uh, moveset on Thunder Wave or Toxic because, you know, you can't Toxic a Venusaur, you can't Paralyze a Thunderous, and I'm just better off um, trying to Paralyze a Body Slam. Is what it is. Now this is a standard small ground facial defensive set, Impish Nature, 252 HP, 240 defense, and 16 speed. Ability Stick Fat, of course, to um, basically minimize the damage from fire type attacks as much as possible, and leftovers for passive recovery. And uh, that's basically that's basically the um, sets of Ram. Um, Sears of Rome Heat, Jurok Terra the Aerodactyl, Kinky the Tentacle, Braun the Cumbler, Your Funeral the Gardevoir, and Moo Moo the Milting. So I basically brought every Pokemon I brought to my week one match except Scizor. I subbed Scizor for Moo Moo the Milting because Scizor against a Sun team, a Sun Beast team, is not a good idea. Let's be real here. That would be suicide. And I did not need as Duff the fire since I have um, Tentacruel as that. So, the match did take place at 10 p.m. Eastern time. I am not gonna spoil you on who won. I mean, if you want to stream and start, great. If not, then I guess you'll see it when I upload it. So guys, with that, the poll to decide when I do upload said battle will be in the movie description. The poll ends, I believe, around 2 p.m. Eastern time. So when I wake up, if the poll says to upload it today, it will be uploaded today. Um, also, in this battle here will be the debut of a sick layout. A sick Chicago B, not Chicago, <laughs> sorry. A sick Charlotte Beedrills layout that Sierra Bear 691 made me for this league. I'm glad I got a chance to um, debut it in a DS battle for the league. I'm really happy about it. I'm really stoked to show you guys that layout. If you guys haven't seen it already, so. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, and I cannot wait, and I, I just love the layout. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, uh, great layout. That I cannot wait to debut it later. But that is pretty much the team. Um, leave a like, comment on your thoughts on the on my picks for the move sets and whatnot, and also hit that subscribe button for more content. I'll be uploading more league matches, uh, more. Wi-Fi battles and randomizing Nuzlocke's, although there won't really be a Nuzlocke episode today because I have um, this team builder going up and potentially the league battle. So instead I'll be uploading a, two episodes of the Nuzlocke on Thursday. But once again guys, please do leave a like, comment, subscribe, I'd like to see more of this content, and I'll catch you on the flip side. And remember, stay salty, Rage Squares, stay salty, and support your Charlotte Beedrills. Whoop whoop!